Hey everybody, welcome to my booth. I'm Jay. Today we got a blind test and then a practical discussion on a few different broadcast microphones. Note that I said broadcast. There are three dynamics, one condenser. You saw the title, you know it's coming. Let's dive in and then we'll talk about them. Here we are on microphone A. This is microphone A. I am a three finger distance from the microphone. I'll keep that consistent between all of these. There is no post-processing. Sometimes I'll apply uh, booth tuning processing on these to take care of room resonance. I'm not doing that this time. Uh, in the uh, latter half, when we talk about the pros and cons of each of these mics, I'll throw that back on. Anyway, this is mic A. Let's hop over to B. And this is microphone B. Microphone B, same distance away, same, no processing applied, none, no processing this time around. Um, and this is B. And what do you think of it? How does it sound different, the same, better, worse? You know, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. Let's hop over to C and give that one a listen. And this is microphone C. Uh-huh. We're on our third of the microphones. This is how it sounds. Same distance away, same direction, same everything, same no processing. And how do we feel about this guy? Um, I'll hop over to our final microphone, microphone D now. And microphone D, the final of the run through, the final countdown. Same distance, same no processing, same whole kit and caboodle. Uh, and how do you feel about this guy? Let's, uh, Let's run through them again. Back to A. And here we are back on microphone A. This is microphone A once again. And how do you feel about this one relative to the others? Uh, it's here. It's doing its thing. It's, it's a microphone. Uh, let's hop back over to B and continue. And here we are back on microphone B. And same deal, same distance, same whole spiel. It's a microphone. Here's the uh, background sound, if that's something that appeals to you in terms of knowing your microphones. <laughs> I don't know if I did that for the first one, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Anyway, let's go over back to C and see what's up there. And we're back on microphone C. Uh, and, you know, in listening to all these, I, I, I don't know. I'll have to listen back more. Anyway, what do you feel about microphone C? Let's hop back to D and keep this rolling. And back on D. How do we feel about D? Let's hop back to A for one final run through. And for the last time, back on A. One day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Biglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a lump today, Piglet. One day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a heffalump today, Piglet. One day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a heffalump today, Piglet. One day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a heffalump today, Piglet. Mic A, the Shure SM7B, and microphone B, the Electrovoice RE20. Mic C, the Fifine Amplitank. Microphone D, the Earthworks Ethos. Okay, just a few things before we dive in. First, and perhaps most important, if you haven't already formed your own thoughts and opinions and you would like to, before I muddy the waters with my own ramblings, Go back and give the samples another listen through and then meet me back here. Hey, welcome back. Just a few more notes. One, it's daytime. I waited a bit to talk more to solidify my own thoughts here. I'm allowed. And then next, I'm not going to talk about the Fi Fine much simply because it's in a different price bracket than the other three, which are all direct competitors in terms of price. I've got another video on this channel going into more depth on the Fi Fine, if that's the mic you're gunning for. But just in brief, I think it's a fantastic option for folks looking to get into streaming, for folks who want an XLR and USB option, for folks who wish to do better Zoom calls above average audio, and for all those use cases, great, great option. 
If, however, you're looking to get into professional audio, i.e. voice over audiobooks, etc., it's still a good option, but I think there are just other microphones at or around that same price point that'll just last you a little bit longer in your career, by my own estimation. Uh, then finally, the RE20 I've had the least amount of time with of the other three microphones. So if that gives me an implicit bias, I just wanted to flag that for you. I'm of course going to try to be as objective as possible in my evaluations and opinions here. That said, let's talk about said thoughts and opinions. So the most important thing for me in terms of broadcast microphones is ease of use. And there are a few different ways that I like to think about it. One is handling, and that's just how easy is it to move the microphone around and position it where I want it to, particularly in a on-the-go while I'm recording situation. In that instance, the Ethos and the SM7B are infallible. They're awesome. They're great. You can be recording and move these around like you're a juggler, and they'll still give you really, really clean, uninterrupted sound pretty much. Uh, the ethos I would give a slight edge to over the SM7B simply owing to its triad orbit mount, which it just allows you to position this thing anywhere you want in a really, really simple fashion. The RE20 necessitates purchasing an extra shock mount, which adds, if you get a third party one like this, that was super duper cheap, 12 bucks. Or if you get the standard ones that are designed for the RE20, those are about 100 bucks. So that turns this microphone from $450 up to anywhere from $460 to $550. Took me a second there. Whereas the Ethos will always be $400, no matter how you shake it down. And the SM7B will still be $400, but if you need to get a cloud lifter, it'll bump this guy up to five. So that's one of the main differences in terms of ease of use, and I guess price when we break it down. The need for a shock mount here adds a bit of a price tag. Why do you need a shock mount? This microphone, with its hard mount, had the worst propensity for resonance and shock rejection of any microphone I've used. To the point where if I tapped on my booth on this side, it would move all the way around through my boom arm into the microphone as if I was doing this. And it would be that loud or more so tapping on the other side of my booth. Which, you know, not ideal. So you have to have a shock mount for this basically. No, this one I picked up again for only 12 bucks, so not the end of the world. Next in terms of ease of use is the noise rejection. In this case, the RE20 and the SM7B being dynamic microphones kick butt at noise rejection. I could open the door to my booth right now and I would still have pretty darn clean sound as long as a siren didn't roll by here in Brooklyn. There is a slight edge here in terms of uh, noise rejection and quietude of the microphones between these two dynamics given to the RE20 because this just needs less gain than the SM7B, meaning this has a little bit more static noise than the RE20 does in my experience, uh, but not by much. It wouldn't be a deal breaker for me either way. Just a small thing to note. The ethos, by contrast to the other two, is, of course, our condenser here, which gives it both an edge and a drawback. In terms of noise rejection, it's a little bit more sensitive than both of the other microphones, which means, yeah, it'll pick up more background noise. I wouldn't be able to open the door of my booth reliably and get decent sound. However, I'm going to get a lot more detail in my performances. So, double-edged sword there and up to you. Plosive rejection, all three of these are great. If you're off axis, mean, meaning not talking directly onto the microphone, but you're turned 45 degrees off, all three of these are great. Uh, the RE20, I have a hard time popping it, to be perfectly honest. The SM7B, probably the middle 
poppage. If I'm really trying, I can pop it. Or if I get really close, and then I can pop it. The Ethos, I popped this one the most of these three, but it's still really good at plosive rejection. Let's put it that way. Uh, so there's that. Now, all things considered in terms of ease of use, they're all really great. They are all plug and play. You don't have to do any fiddling with EQs or yada, yada, yada. They all sound great out of the box. Plug them in, go. The biggest thing for me is probably that ah, the need for a shock mount with the RE20. And that's the thing that would be the big deciding factor between them. There you go. Ease of use. Done. Let's talk tone. The RE20 has this really lovely high presence boost a bit that gives it a forward-leaning, energetic, or energized sound. It's almost like it's grabbing your attention a little bit more. It's marketed somewhat as being condenser-like in its uh, sound profile. And I agree. It sounds very condenser-like of the dynamics that I've tried. So you could think of this one as the most like, ooh, energetic, forward-leaning, exciting, almost radio broadcast. I've seen that thrown around quite a bit here on YouTube. And the Ethos and the SM7B, a little bit more laid back, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more podcasty in terms of sound profile. Does that mean that any of these can't be used in either application? Absolutely not. And in fact, that is not the case. They're all used in all applications. But if you were to be really reductive about it, that's sort of the tone. Let me pop on another mic and we'll keep talking. There's not a lot to say more, but I just wanted to touch back with our good friend here, the SM7B. I do think that it has, there's, there's something to me about using this that is very comfortable for me. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the tone of my voice through it or if it's the fact of using it. But it's just really comfy to use. It feels cozy to me. I don't know what that means. But uh, yeah, I think I've covered most of the points so far that would delineate the three of these. But if I were to pick a favorite among them, you know, I really do think that it's somewhat a... Uh, project to project thing for me personally at this point uh, and it would just be a personal preference deal if you like one of these microphones over the others there you go that's the way to do it but I don't think any of them are going to win out categorically across the deal um, yeah so there's there's that little snafu to throw in there I do notice relative with this microphone relative to the other two, this microphone I tend to find myself pushing on occasion. In other words, occasionally I'll find myself using more effort with the SM7B if I'm doing a narration, say, than with the uh, Ethos or in my limited experience with it, the RE20 as well. And I think that's owing to the sensitivity and sound profile of both of them. Let's pop on the Ethos one last time and wrap things up. So, yeah, I mean, I really like this one. I really like the Ethos. I do I do really like using the others, but uh, there's something about this guy that um, really... It, it floats my boat, as it were. Um... I, I didn't talk a ton about this in very concrete terms, but uh, in terms of the ease of use category, just because I think it bears a little bit of repeating now that we're here with the ethos on, um, having a condenser and only needing... This microphone requires less gain than my U87 does, which is... It's wild to me. This microphone is incredibly sensitive for that respect. And I dig it. And it's a broadcast microphone that's really easy to use relative to the others that has pretty darn good uh, off-axis rejection. Let's get this go. Here we go. Ta -da. Talking about the handling noise. I mean, come on. Come on, you, don't you guys. Um, anyway. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for y'all. If you have any thoughts, if you have a favorite, if there's one that you use, I'd love to hear. And uh, until the next one of these, be well, everybody, and I will see you there. Toodles. Toodles.